I have learned a lot since the last time I posted a wig video, and today I'm going to show you how I got huge volume for my Harpy Edo wig. And while I am stacking wigs for length, this is one wig. So welcome to my wig styling redemption arc. There's no more cardboard and no more hot glue. And I think you'll find that even if you've never styled a wig before, you can do this. So this is kind of a wig stash busting project. I've actually sort of been avoiding cosplaying Ida for a little bit because I knew I would have to spend a lot of money on hair. The specific wig I knew I would need was the Arda Nigel. And that wig is really special because it's actually double wefted, which meant that I wouldn't have to spend a bunch of time sewing wefts into another wig. I do actually own one. It's this. I bought this for Rosalina right before the pandemic and I just, I'm never going to finish that costume. <laughs> I'm just not. This was sort of the crux of realizing that, hey, I could cosplay Ida because I could just use stash wigs. The other problem is Ida's hairline comes right out of her head and she has a little bit of a widow's peak. And I also found something else I bought for Rosalina. This is a lace square. There's basically two kinds of fronts that a wig can have, a lace front and a hard front. The Nigel is a hard front wig, but I can add a square of lace to it. So I can use this finally for something and sew it onto this. This was already teased. You can kind of tell, tell. It already sort of looks like Rosalina. The only thing about the Art of Nigel is he is a little short. He's a short king. And to mitigate that, I also have, it's over there. This is an Art of La Tigre. They don't sell the La Tigres anymore, but I'm just using it for its length. Yeah, the other thing is I'm not actually sure yet how I'm going to incorporate the La Tigre. It might just be that this one goes on top of this one but I don't know yet. But before I combine any of these, I need to dye both of these. So let's do that. So dyeing synthetic wigs is actually really easy. And the best way to do it is with any fabric dye that is meant for polyester fabrics. And I'm using Rit Dye More in light gray for this. In the old days of cosplay, Sharpie and ink dyeing were really popular, but I speak from experience when I say that those both are incredibly messy and bleed on you when they're done. But polyester fabric dyes don't do that. Synthetic wigs are plastic fibers the same way that polyester fabric is, which is why this works so well. Now I'm dyeing a blonde wig gray, so the wig color difference isn't huge, but generally this is the best method. And you use the dye the same way you do with fabric, with a pot on the stove, and also make sure you don't use this pot for food ever again. This is my designated dye pot and I don't cook with it. Also, use your kitchen fan if you have one, because this stuff is toxic. But yeah, you heat up your dye and dunk your wig. And the length of time you leave it in there is gonna depend on how you want the color to look, but the dye does take pretty quickly, so be prepared to take the forbidden spaghetti out fast if you need to. Also, I'm just throwing them onto a towel onto the floor. And this is what you get when you dye a wig this way, an absolute mess. So be prepared for this if you choose to dye a wig in a pot. But luckily, this is easily fixed with our next step, steaming. I cannot recommend getting a steamer enough for wig styling. This is the kind of steamer sold to get wrinkles out of clothes, and this one isn't super great, but it gets the job done. Basic ones will run you about $30, but they are absolutely worth the investment. The steam works really well for wigs because it creates a much more concentrated and controlled field of heat than a blow dryer and straightens and styles the wig much faster than a straightener because that field of heat is larger and you can do lots of fibers at once instead of going weft by weft. What I'm doing next is a technique I picked up from the legendary wig stylist, Hee Hee. We're gonna flip the wig upside down and steam the entire thing, paying particular attention to the roots. This flips the roots upwards and gives you a ton of volume even before you tease the wig. And with short wigs, you can kind of use this as the only volume you need. Once it's steamed, you need to let the wig cool down for a while, but once it's cool and dry, we can flip it back up and move on to teasing. So this is something I picked up from a James Mansfield tutorial. Basically the concept is when you tease, you don't wanna just take a section and tease it and move on. For really big wigs like this, you need a sort of cloud of hair. So what you wanna do is take your new section and tease it into a piece 
of your already established cloud and then sort of work them together. And that way they all sort of support each other and it gives you a lot more volume than if you just had lots of little sections just sitting around there. And that way it also helps make sure that you don't have any like weird, awkward spots or bald spots or anything like that. But teasing is a really, really long process. You sort of have to do it methodically. And most of the times you have to tease and re-tease and keep teasing and see like this part's not really going in here. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pick it apart a little bit, take these, tease them together, take these, tease them together and really make sure everything is fluffed into one. I'm gonna link that James Manfield video too because it is such a great resource for learning how to do this. But basically, I'm gonna sit here and tease this forever and ever. Now, because Ida's hair is so big all the way around, I can't just tease where the spikes will be. I need to tease the entire wig all the way around, all the way down to the bottom. Another thing to pay attention to that commonly happens when you tease a wig is you'll take a little section of fibers and you'll get these big loops and you don't want those because that's a big clump of hair that isn't adding anything to the volume. So when you get those, you need to pull them out and re-tease them. A misconception with teasing wigs is that you just tease, 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 tease. But what you actually want to do is tease, untease, tease again, heat the fiber so it retains the texture, tease more, and particularly tease it so that it forms your cloud of hair. Also, this is super important, but this wig is already very layered, which means I didn't have to cut it before I started this. But if you're working with a wig that has no layers at all, you're going to need to layer it before you start teasing. Next, I very carefully cut the lace square into a widow's peak shape and then hand sewed that into the front of the wig. Well, here's this. I cut the point way too pointy and I know from past experience with widow's peaks that that's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna like round it out a little bit, but the volume is here. Before I style the spikes, I wanna put the wig on my head and separate out the pieces that I want to frame my face. And once I have those secure, it's time to start styling. I'm gonna start with the spikes, but first let me explain how we're gonna get this teased mess to look nice again. So like I said, wig fibers are plastic and their shape can be changed and set with heat. And what we did with all of our teasing and heat was create a frizzy tangled texture that both holds the wig together, but also is giving us air pockets that are creating the volume but we don't want that frizzy texture on the outside of the wig. So we're going to get rid of it by combing and straightening the outside layers of the hair. Our goal is to have the interior super teased, the middle layers teased and frizzy, but semi combed and semi smooth, and the outside layer completely smooth. Here's the breakdown. Comb all the tangles out of the outside of the spike. If you want to, you could have left a few sections of hair unteased to cover the spikes after, but I teased the whole thing. So I'm going to take the outermost layers and take as long as I need to comb out all the tangles. Then we're gonna smooth the outermost layer. The last layer I'm going to straighten with my tiny baby straightener, taking out the frizzy texture and making the whole thing look nice and clean. Then we're gonna spray the interior of the spike with hairspray. You might find that you don't even really need to do this if you've done a good enough job teasing, but for extra security, I'm picking open the tease and spraying into it. You'll notice I haven't used any hairspray yet, but now it's time for the one and only got to be glued. Now, this is important. You really don't wanna go heavy handed with the hairspray on the outside of the wig, but you can go pretty heavy handed on the interior of the spikes, but you wanna light spray on the outside. Right after that, we're gonna blow dry the interior. I have heard many a wig worker live by always blow drying after you hairspray. Now I'm going to spray the middle layer of semi-teased hair. This is going to work as glue because what I'm going to do next is very quickly comb the smooth hair onto the spike. Now you wanna do this before that hairspray dries down. So have your comb ready and comb the smooth hair into that wet hairspray. Then lightly spray again because we combed it into the spray. The bottom is coated, but the top is not. But we're on the outside here. So keep the spray further away from the wig. And then finally, 
blow dry. Now you should have one section of a spike. Remember, you have to do this section by section. You can't do each of these steps all at once all over the wig. So now I have to repeat this process all the way around the spikes. Here's the breakdown one more time. Comb all the tangles out of the outside of the spike. Smooth the outermost layer. Spray the interior of the spike. Blow dry the interior. Spray the outside of the spike. Comb the smooth hair onto the spike. Lightly spray again. Blow dry. I then repeated the whole thing all the way around the wig. And this time, instead of spiking, I'm sort of just letting it quaff into the rounded shape of Ida's hair, but I'm doing the same thing all over again. Comb, smooth, spray, dry, spray, comb, spray, dry. It might seem like a lot, but if you really want a clean looking wig, this is a good method. Finally, I can move on to the tigre. I do plan on just stacking them, so I put them both on the wig head and start cutting layers into the tigre. This is the part of the video where if you're a professional hairstylist, you look away. When you cut wigs, you want to use this sort of movement. With the scissors moving up and down as you cut, this creates even more layers, but more importantly, doesn't give you any weird blunt edges. I believe the technical term for what I'm doing is hacking, hacking up a wig. I'm also using a razor blade, but if you don't have one of these, you can just use the up and down scissor motion. With all the layers in, I teased the length of the Le Tigre, and you guessed it, teased, unteased, teased again, combed again, forever and ever, amen, until it looked like this. This is honestly the first wig I've done in a while that I actually really liked and felt like I did a good job on. Taking the time to straighten the outside of the spikes really made a difference. Anyway, I'm super hyped for making Harpy Ida now. I haven't finished the costume yet, but I'm doing a sort of fantastical and witchy version of her. And you're going to get a video for a corset. Yeah, a corset, a dress and the wings. So definitely subscribe for those. So I hope you enjoyed my wig styling redemption arc. Four years ago, I posted my first ever YouTube video, the ye old Peridot wig video. And boy, I can safely say now that I had no idea what I was doing back then. If I were to do that wig again, this is basically what I would do, except make it more triangular. I never really talked about why I stopped making videos back then, but the simple answer is that the style I make these in takes a lot of work. But a couple of years ago, I ran into somebody who had used that Peridot video to make their own Peridot wig. And knowing that one day I might run into one of these wigs really does make that work worth it. I can't thank you enough for watching and a big thank you to my very first big support tier patron, Claire, I finally have an excuse to say that this video was brought to you by viewers like you. Thanks for watching. Bye.